Hey everybody, it's Dr. Taylor and welcome to today's video, which is the second part of a four part series about the types of measurement scales. And today we're going to be talking about ordinal scales, what they are and how you analyze them. So let's get started. All right, so ordinal scales. Ordinal scales are one step higher than nominal scales. So in the last video, we talked about nominal scales, how there was no hierarchy, the numbers were arbitrary, and the only thing that really mattered was the names of the categories. That's where the meaning was. Um, well, ordinal scales are one step higher than that, and that the numbers actually have meaning now. So the numbers are no longer arbitrary, they have meaning. Um, and the order of the numbers matters. So this means that a hierarchy exists. So there is um, one level is more than a different level. So this hierarchy matters and one category is better or more than the other. Um, and so from here on out, whether it be ordinal scales, intervals, or ratio, there will always exist a hierarchy. Now the difference between an ordinal scale and a interval scale and a ratio scale is that the categories have unequal groupings. And this is an important note. So you have a hierarchy, but the groupings of the categories are unequal. And that makes it an ordinal scale. And they're unequal be either because of the inability to capture all of the options, uh, so this happens a lot with income where we can't capture the highest level of income. So maybe our last category is 150 plus. That 150 plus automatically makes it an unequal category. And so it is now considered an ordinal scale. And then we also um, have them unequal for theoretical reasons. Maybe there's a rationale, like maybe we're looking at age and we want to look at millennials versus boomers. And those age groups that we create are unequal, but one is older than the other. Um, so for income, for an example for income, we could have the number one equals less than 25,000, which is a grouping of $25,000. Uh, two could equal 25,000 to five to 59,999, and that would be a $34,999 grouping. We could make three equal to our category, which is $60,000 to $99,999 worth of income and that would equal a 39,999 grouping. Um, and then you have a uh, four, which is 100,000 or more. And this is an infinite grouping because it could go up to a million billion dollars depending on their income. So we don't know what the highest level of income is. We do know based on census data, what the averages are and, and what the curve should look like. So we know that very few people have um, hundreds of millions or billions of dollars, but it's still, they could possibly maybe take our survey. So makes it an unequal grouping. So here's an example of what income looks like. What is your household, what is your annual household income? And then we have our different categories. In how you categorize them depends on the research question you're asking. So you might have different groupings depending on your research question. So if I know I have specific income cutoffs and I'm interested in looking at the data for different groups of income, then I'll want to make sure that those groupings match the data that I want to get. So while the, there are some standards for using income and where the income break should be, it should really always be driven by your research question and what data you want to acquire. Okay, so education is another ordinal variable because one level of education is higher or more than uh, a lower level. So what is the highest degree or level of education you have completed? Some high school, high school, trade school, bachelor's degree, master's degree, PhD or higher, or prefer not to say. And so high school is higher or more education than some high school. 
bachelor's degree is more than trade school or high school or even some high school. Master's degree is one level above a bachelor's degree. A PhD or higher is a master's degree. So a PhD, MD, those are all ordinal. So there's a, a hierarchy involved there. So what do you report? What do we analyze with ordinal scales? Um, there are three things that we report. First, a median. And so this is more than, if you remember from the nominal video, we could only report this mode and frequency. So now we've added another level of reporting statistics and we can report median now. And median is simply, if you place all the numbers in value order, then you take the one that's exactly in the middle and that is your median. Um, mode, as we talked about in our last video, is the most frequently occurring. So you would figure out the frequencies and see which one was, had the highest level of counts. And sometimes you can have multiple modes if you have uh, more than one category that has equal amounts of frequencies. Um, and then of course, reporting frequencies as counts or percentages. Okay, so let's, let's talk about an example. If we had the survey question, what is your income? And we have these categories of zero to 10,000, which has a $10,000 uh, grouping. And then we have 10,001 to a $20,000. That's about a, a $20,000 window uh, or grouping. 20,000 to 40,000, that's 20,000. Uh, 40,000 to 75 K that's a different amount. And as you can see, so all of these have different unequal groupings, which makes an ordinal variable. And with this income one, they capped it. So maybe for the research question, they knew they were only talking to people who were under a certain income, but they wanted to group it. So they had a cap, but they had unequal groupings because maybe this was driven by theoretical reasons. Um, but if we have the answers, so we have our different cases and these were their answers. And if we do the analysis and we put them in order and we find that one that's in the middle, then we know that our median is two. So you can see we have one, two, three, four, five on this side, one, two, three, four, five on this side. So we know that this is the median. Now, if there was an extra case and it was an even number, you would take the two numbers, so say we had another five down here, you would take these two numbers and you would divide by two to get the midpoint there. But because we have an odd number, we'll just simply take that very middle variable. So our median is two. Now our mode is one. One is what we have the most, the highest frequency for. So if we do our frequencies, we can count and see which category, how many we have in each category. And then we can turn that into a percentage by dividing the count numbers by 11. And so this is all the analysis that you really need to do for an ordinal variable. Median, mode, and you can do frequencies and counts and percentages. And that's it. One last thing just to remember is that when you do percentages and they're rounded, you could have, um, and in this case, we have a total that's 100.1% and that's a, a rounding issue. So always make sure you're aware of any rounding issues that you have so you can explain it to your client or professor when you're doing, when you're reporting on your analysis. But that's it for the types of measurement skills workshop talking about ordinal scales. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'll talk to you later.